Over the past year, I had received a great deal of help and support from the church. During this time, there were several male elders and there were no women elders, and I understood these men were seeking to honour the Lord in everything. The church had also decided to sever links with the trustees who were the United Reformed Church. This was because the trustees of the Warsash Church supported homosexuals becoming elders. The Warsash Church did not support homosexuality. I supported them in their stand against homosexuality and encouraged them in it. In November, I had been asked if I would like to become a church member and I said I would like to, but I declined in the end due to my domestic situation. I was informed I was to consider myself one of the church and could join whenever I wanted. After this, one of the former elders announced he was leaving with his wife and also another senior elder announced he would be leaving too in May 1999. Another former elder had also left, leaving only five elders left. There had never been a mention of women being elders whilst I was there. It was at this time these remaining elders sought to appoint new elders and open up nominations for women. At my meeting with the elders, it was stated that they saw no reason why a woman should not become an elder. So, I felt it my duty to give the reasons. I had learned these things soon after I'd become a Christian and was used to, and was used to establishing every point of belief from Scripture alone. And this was what surprised me. Why did these men not do so? 7. Blindness, no excuse to ignore scripture. There are several scriptural reasons why women should not be made elders or rule over men. Man is the head of the woman, according to Corinthians 11. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Every man, praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonours his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoureth her head. For this is even all one as if she were shaven. For if a woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man, indeed, ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is in the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so the man also by the woman, but all things are of God. Judge in yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man having long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. If any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither in the churches of God. Now either there were more than one church in Corinth, or Paul means all the churches throughout the world. This was Christian practice, and not a cultural practice from the world. And the reason for it is because of what scripture teaches regarding the relationship between the man and woman in creation, and since their fall into sin in the Garden of Eden. A Christian marriage was to reflect the relationship between Christ and his church. God made Adam first, giving him instructions and commandments to name the creatures, and not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil before Eve had been made. Genesis 2. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. 
Genesis 2. And out of the ground the Lord God made every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for man there was not found an help meet for him. God made Eve for Adam in order to help and support him in his work. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. God placed woman under subjection to man after she had sinned in the garden. This is not a cultural issue. Genesis 3. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be towards thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Peter instructs wives to be subject to their husbands. Wives should be subject to their own husbands, says Peter the Apostle to the Jews. Peter 3. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plaiting of the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, of great price. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Wives should be subject to their own husbands, says Paul, the apostles of the Gentiles, Ephesians 5. Wives, subject yourselves to your own husband as unto the Lord. For the Lord is the head of the wife, even of Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything, Colossians 3. Wives, subject yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Women, to learn in silence, not to teach or usurp authority over man. Timothy 2. Let the woman learn in silence, with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach or usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. This was the rule in all the churches, not just Corinth. These are the commandments of the Lord, not Paul's opinion. Corinthians 14. Let your women keep silence in the church, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Corinthians 14. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Corinthians 14. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, then let him acknowledge that these things that are right are commandments of the Lord. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behaviour as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach their younger women to be sober, to love their husbands and love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Elders to be men, not women, Ruling his own house well. Timothy 3. This is a true saying. If any man desire the office of a bishop or an elder, he desires a good work. 
A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behaviour, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy for filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, nor covetous. One that ruleth his own house well, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Note of explanation, Timothy 2. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. The word saved is the same word used to describe the experience of a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years, and Jesus healed her. She was made whole, that is, saved. Made whole equals saved. A woman will find wholesomeness saved in childbearing, i.e. bringing up children and functioning as a godly wife, God made her to love and support her husband and bring up her children. The virtuous woman in Proverbs. Proverbs 30 verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of a husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. The whole chapter treats of the fulfilled woman. These are some of the scriptures which speak directly on the subject of women and leadership. I hope this is of some help. This matter is as clear as Jesus is Lord. Man should protect women, not help ruin them. Why do women wish to resist God's order by wanting to become elders? Men who support women in this area are not protecting them. When Eve sinned, Adam should have prayed for her not gone along with her in a sin, so men ought to contend for the truth of God in this matter, to safeguard women from similar consequences. Otherwise, they will become pungit, that's a word for ugly, into dialogue. A warning to the people of God, Isaiah 3. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people... They which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Isaiah 8. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. To ignore God's word on a matter so plain is foolishness. Should we ignore God's word, it might be written of us one day, let them alone. They be blind, leaders of the blind. Matthew 15, verse 4. I have given more than seven scriptural quotations to show that a woman cannot qualify to be an elder. I am, however, also aware it is written, the sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men who can render a reason. Proverbs 26, verse 16. I would urge you to consider the issue regarding women elders. This is my duty to you, all in love. I am speaking the word of God in the name and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a trial to both you and me. I certainly can see how the Lord has tried me in this issue to see if I am prepared to speak out for him. David Clark, 62nd, 1999.